everybody, and welcome back to the Dial Podcast. I am Jake Von Dering, and I'm here with Lance Hepler. Lance Romance, right here for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> it is the pleasure. lack of view- it viewing is, pleasure. It is a pleasure. There's, thank you, Matt. <laughs> I'm here for you. Cool. <laughs> Tis right, Evan Price. Is this the first time all four of us have been saying that? It's been a while. I think it's been a long while. It's been, been a too minute. Long. Yep. It really has. Though our drinking patterns have not changed at all. No. no. Bubbly, things. LaCroix, LaCroix, LaCroix. LaCroix. And Coffee. LaCroix. Coffee. Coffee. And whatever's in Lance's, probably Monster. It's Monster. water. It's probably what, Monster. What is, Jake, water. what does your mug say? Have you seen... Well, have, I've seen this mug a bunch. I've have you it. seen the Wanderer Chainless? Okay. Uh, oh, fixed gear bike? Uh, oh, no, uh, the yeah, Wonder yeah, Chainless? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Lance got it for me for my birthday last year. Uh, Brandy got that for you for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Brandy. <laughs> now I have to find out what it's is a the Chainless nice Bicycle. Mug. Yeah. I have no idea. Well, they have the Belt Bicycles. <laughs> Oh, so it could yes. be that. It could be that. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna assume New that's technology. the case. She yes. saw the mug, thought it was cool, and like, let's get that for Jake. It's yeah, okay, like honey. It. Whatever you say. I yeah, actually like the look of it. It's a very Thank cool you, looking mug. Thank you very much. I use it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Devin's right, Matt Legrand. What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? You guys are looking good today. Yes. My goodness, you guys. You're look clean good. shaven. Yeah, it's been yeah. a while. I didn't uh, realize yesterday. that today. Yesterday, I just you got took rid it off. Yeah, you know. It you really coming, do look about 10 years younger. When it you was coming in pretty thick, and I could have done something cool with it, but I didn't. <laughs> you're going to look so young when you're in your <laughs> 70s. You could have gone with the Chester mustache <laughs> Chester. for just a couple weeks. It would have been yeah. so good. People did, love Chester. Did People, you, before you yeah. shaved it, did you film like 20 different scenes with Chester? I did. <laughs> That's what I was thinking was a mistake. Is Chester's, just an hour of Chester scenes. Right? Chester's so good, I should have uh, definitely come up with something. But <laughs> mm-hmm. Bring him back. Bring him back. Yeah. Bring him back. Don't worry. Tomorrow I'll have a full beard. It just, <laughs> That's just right. It grows. All you got to do is go like this. <laughs> <laughs> and it just pops out. Yeah. Hey, Matt, you're talking. Why don't you go ahead and backpedal for us? I swam in the lake with Evan this morning. It was choppy. Lakey. Did you pee in your wetsuit? <laughs> yes. I did. Okay. Yeah. That's Absolutely. Right. Um, you were lamenting why... <laughs> Those wet suits, Why those wet suits smell, smell bad? so bad? Well, it's it's not. They, I don't even think it's like out. it's not like a stink. It's like the it's just like a neoprene smell. Like yeah, whenever I'm it's like, a very oh, strong like neoprene I've been, smell. I've been, it's like oh, I, it's not really a lake stink. It's like oh, I just smell like I've been wearing a wetsuit. I don't like it. No, it's a very bad smell. I don't like the smell of that. It's pungent. Uh, the pee, you know, the urine smell. That's great. Yep, <laughs> but um, that kills the, That kills the. The, the, that the kills everything. Spell. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the water was so choppy, I felt like I got hit in the face with a brick a couple of times. And some of the, you know, I swallowed a fair amount of, there's not much Vancouver Lake water left because no. I swallowed <laughs> some and you swallowed some. Between you, me, and Josh, I'm pretty sure we swallowed most of Vancouver <laughs> Lake there. So. Did, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, it, you know, the whole time I was thinking, like, this is pretty good for me because I never swim in choppy water. It's always like Fall yeah. Leaf Lake, which is glass and. The you need that practice because it, it. It more often than not, you're yeah. swimming in chop. Races are usually going to be in chop. Yeah. yeah. That was more chop than usual yeah. from the lakes that I've seen. Yeah. But That was a choppier day at Vancouver But Lake, still, definitely. it was nice, and uh, it was good to get out there. And I brought the camera and tried to film some stuff for some videos that are coming up. And uh, got on the bike a couple times the past week. Um, I did this ride with uh, Sean, and he's Sean Henry's like a friend. Sean Henry's a friend of the show. Yeah. He'll he'll mm-hmm. come on the show at some point, I assume. Because I've been telling to him to show. come on forever. He's way more interesting than we are. He's, he's a very funny guy. He's too. very witty, and I think yes. it would be really perfect. Very for the show. good sense of humor. Yeah. We went for a ride on Saturday, and we did this ride that was just like what you and I would do. And, and he was like, "Hey, you know, you want to do this ride? Like, you have to lead." And I was like, "Okay, well, here's the here are the rules." You see a road that we don't know where it goes, then you take We're the going road. down you, it. You go that way. Mm-hmm. Lance or did that to me go. yesterday. I did. It's fun. It's a fun way I, to ride. Except I was as lost as Jake was. <laughs> and Sean sent me a text yesterday or you know, after our ride, and he said something like, that was just like being a kid and just go riding your bike around. <laughs> exactly. That's and I was fun. Like, that was so awesome. It was perfect. But you know what? How many new roads have we like find? You find cool and, stuff. Yeah. And uh, we were riding on this one kind of obscure road, and – I was like, and we were going to stop and have coffee. And I was like, ah, I am not going to stop. Like, I don't have a mask. And um, he, he was like, I was like, do you have a mask? And he was like, yes. And he's like, I've got one. And I'm like, you know, I can take my arm <laughs> warmer and wrap it around my helmet, which I've done before. And it kind of like short term works. And some lady like l- was in her driveway and she heard us say that. And she was like, hey, I've got a 
disposable one. I got a mask here. I got a mask. You can have it. And really? I was like, <laughs> what a nice really? lady. Oh and then I was gosh. like, I was like, I don't know. And she's then, got chloroform in <laughs> it. Yeah, so Mag passes just, out in her driveway. Yeah. And, but I was like, okay, I'll take it. And so it was super nice. She gave me a mask and then we went and we had coffee Matt, at the end of our All I got to do is ride around the parking lot to see one on half buried in the dirt somewhere. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> they're laying all over the parking lot these days. That looks good. That is nothing I can get from this. Yeah. So it was a great ride. Uh, you know, the we had some rain this week. A little and bit. It's hasn't been perfect. Like, you know, I guess we'll let you guys talk about the dialed flogging ride. I skipped that one, rode indoors, even though I do really enjoy that ride. We need the rain badly right now, though, in it's, this region. We've got a dry week coming up, and it's that actually nice. not a good time for a dry no. week. No. In, this is in not yet. Anybody who's been tracking that, it is ooh, yeah. in scary times. Yeah. yeah. I ran five miles yesterday, which is kind of long for me. Nice. Mm-hmm. The running side of stuff. Solid pace, too. How's yeah. Achilles? Eh, it's not good. It's a killing. It hurt to walk <laughs> around, even like walking to the lake and stuff, like little, little Sorry. things. Yeah, it's uh, it's worthless. I'm still looking into the peg leg situation because that's <laughs> that looks like a promising yeah. option. Peg leg technology is not, hasn't advanced much since pirate days. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think it's moving in the right direction. That's it, <laughs> Matt. Out, Mr. Evan Price. Matt already covered. Vancouver Lake was choppy. It, it was, was a good swim. It was fun. Um, For yes, those playing along at home, every time you hear the word choppy, just take a drink. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vancouver Lake or Choppy, you could say both. Um, outside of that, I'm back into some big volume training. I got six right. weeks going into Des Moines, uh, which is my next 73. Nice. So it's been good. I finally got back on the track this morning. I haven't done four. Me and Josh were talking. We haven't done 400s in a while. So right. 400s felt like a lot of speed, but it was really good to do. I feel like I don't feel like I'm a runner unless I'm doing like hard track sets. So whenever I do hard track sets, I like feel like a runner again, which is good. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, that's fair. yeah, and then outside of that, Mother's Day was yesterday. We oh, were yeah. filming this on on Monday. Yesterday was Sunday, which is Mother's Day, and I my mother is in Ohio, so I got to Facetime her while we were both on Zwift. Oh, wow. that's in <laughs> in Watopia. That's next we, level. We were yeah. That's funny. That's how I spend my my Mother's Day talking to my mom is on a bicycle trainer while she is too because it was pouring in Ohio. So it's actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, but um. Uh, Cassie's mom was here. Betsy was here, which was awesome to get to see her. And she's doing well. And they they moved. Uh, they bought a house out here, so they live right down the street from us, which is pretty cool now. So it's not their primary residence, is it? No, they they, they still have their home in San Jose. They're going to slowly move up here over time. Are they we'll just see. like knocking on your door? Any kids yet? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be back. Yeah. we'll be back in an hour. <laughs> They're not going to permanently move up here till there is. I'm sure, but yeah, okay. that's no. Um, you could put those parents, grandparents, to work, Dude, right? It's so I mean, convenient. Uh, yeah, Dude, that's that's one of those things where you're like, your oh, life, I never life realized. decisions on where we're going to stay is going to be close to. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere where we need. I know it was cool moving out here by myself, and now that I've been out here by myself for all, I was like, ah, I think family out here would be great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I think having some. <laughs> Lance, backpedal. Uh, I rode every day this week. Um, I had a great yeah. time. I actually went to do the uh, beaches ride on Monday night. Yeah, yeah. It, it was With all uh, of us. It was it was sprinkling, and I pulled into the parking lot. Nobody there. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody bailed. So I rode home. <laughs> I, wait, I waited about half an hour, and then I sent you a text. Oh, yeah, by the way. By the way, it's, we're all good. It's, it's raining, I pull up so. my, my find my friends thing, and I'm like, oh, Matt's still at home. I guess nobody's coming. So I yeah. love that you guys can find me anytime. I know. I'm it's, like, it's, it's too funny. Yeah. Um, the rest of the week, I did a couple team rides. We had a, we had a team mountain bike ride, which we was sure a did. ton of fun on Tuesday. That was yeah. good. We had a little, wait, yeah, you sent some, you showed some pictures. We had, we had the Hayden family show up and they okay. have a 10 oh, year nice. old girl, Whitney. Yep. I shouldn't say their names. And a seven year old boy that showed up and guess who hung with the group? They can crush. Yes, yeah. they can crush. It was so cool to have, have these little kids. Have you kids. ridden with Hayden enough to know that clearly there's a gene in that family that is insanely I'm, strong? I'm kind of yeah. flying different, down different a trail, Hayden. and yeah. Hayden... Oh, different Hayden. That's their yeah. last name. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Whitney Hayden. Ah, right. yeah. gotcha, oh, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, she rode okay. with us on Zwift like, I'm thinking this winter. <laughs> yeah. All winter, yeah. She, yeah. Her goal was always to stick with us for the first, I think, hour is what her yeah. goal was. That's also my goal. Turning herself inside out to oh, keep I up with the group, and her mom would send me profiles of her heart rate. Good <laughs> lord, like was the whole she time. was just crushing. Oh, they're hummingbirds at that age. You yeah. like average 190 <laughs> on a ride. But yeah. she's like putting out, it was like over four watts per kilogram to stay with the group. Seriously? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my gosh. She's oh. amazing. 10. Yeah. <laughs> she's 10. 
So that was just, really cool to yeah. rip around some trails and it was kids are monsters on it was mountain a good bikes. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we yeah. had a lot of fun. Uh, then we had our flogging ride on Thursday. Nice and dry. Uh, no, it rained the whole time. Mother Nature got the invite. She showed up, but yeah. it was not cold. It was. Right. It was like 65 degrees, so it wasn't cold. So I was still like bare sleeves and all that. Yeah. Um, I actually promptly got dropped on that ride. Oh, no. <laughs> I think I was carrying a little fatigue from the previous uh, uh, weekend's gravel race. Mm-hmm. And I just, I gapped at the wrong time and got dropped. Interesting thing on that ride, um, my normalized power for that ride was 312. And I don't. Normally, oh, like an hour and ten minutes, hour yes. and fifteen minutes, and Oof. I don't normally ever Jeez. have a normalized power that high on a on a ride, but that wow. isn't a race. Let so alone a road ride too. I was working, and I still got dropped on there. from the A group. I should clarify, I got dropped from the A group. Yeah, yeah. did Too you bad f- there wasn't a B group chasing your tail? <laughs> oh, man, I could have used it. Yeah, That's right, so no joke. Ton of fun. From there. Um, I went to uh, Bend. I went back to Central Oregon. I did a mountain bike race, and so like you do. Um, this was the Chain Breaker mountain bike race. It was a twenty-four mile um, race with about two thousand feet of climbing. I think it, what it was. Did you break your chain? I did not break my chain. Okay. Chain but, but my bottom bracket was creaking at me the whole time. Okay. Um, our field. This is kind of funny story. We were able to start in one wave. There was 25 people in our in our wave. I, I competed mm-hmm. in the Cat 250 to 59 group. We had 25 of us. And we roll up to the start, and the, our starter was Chuck Kenlin, the, uh, um, the, the director of uh, OBRA, our Oregon Bicycle Racing mm-hmm. Association. He sees us all roll up, and he goes, okay, anybody who beats Lance gets $100. <laughs> That's awesome. What? He that is so that. awesome. He said that to the group, and I'm I like, <laughs> what? Wait, Chuck, you can't do this plus – Court Johnson, who's a guy I've been battling all yeah. year, we've raced four times together. He's beat me three times. Didn't need any yeah. more motivation. Yeah, he <laughs> so, did not need it. So Court looks at me and he's like, "If I win, I'll split it with you." <laughs> let, like deal. Let me win, and you'll. <laughs> so I think uh, I think we really need as a team to embrace the Bond villain thing at these races. <laughs> like really, just embrace the dark, you know, the 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 like dark empire type Star Warsy vibe. <laughs> we could have the Empire music play when like. <laughs> Yeah, whenever you guys roll Lance, up to the line, right, yeah. to the starting. <laughs> I'm concerned for me and Joshua Trathons. I'm just going to like play that in the background as we come up now. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. So the race was pretty crazy. You know, 25 miles on a mountain bike, uh, roughly an hour and 45 minutes is what it took us. I think an hour 47 is what uh, we raced. But it's a long mountain bike race. Um, I We took off, and Court and I kind of – Dropped the whole field right. right at the beginning. There were some strong guys in there, but we ended Got up away. beating most of the field by like three or four minutes, I believe. But five miles into the race, Court gapped me. I, I was just sitting on his wheel, and I told him, I'm just going to sit on your wheel as long as I can. And he actually pulled away from me on an uphill section, and I thought, that's it. He's gone. There's no way uh, I'm going to see him again. Then there was like a 10-mile section that was that was rolling, like punchy, sharp climbs yeah. and all the single track and technical stuff. I caught him. Yeah, he got back on. He, he got yeah. away like by a minute from me, and I'm passing his teammates, and I'm like, where's Court? And they're like, he's like minutes up the road. And I'm like, pull me up to your teammate. <laughs> they're like, no, you pull me up. It was funny. But I ended up catching him, which I did not think I'd see him again. Right. And I, I, catch, I catch up to Court on this downhill section that was like a double track section and I tried to blow past him just to like right just go just to like completely demotivate him yep. like oh man Hepler caught me but the road went back uphill and he, <laughs> he caught back up to me and he he beat me into the very last section of single track there was like five miles of single yeah. track left and he beat me into it, and that was that. That was it. I couldn't get Can't around pass. him. No, yeah. and we were catching all this lap traffic. Oh yeah. And so uh, we and 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 we're both yelling at each other. It was just too funny. I'm like, okay, court, no flats, no crashes. Let's just race this straight up. He's like, yes, no flats, no crashes. Let's go. And so we're we're yeah. all, but we're both just like yeah. gassing ourselves, and um, he beat me by six seconds. <laughs> That's good. Oh. So I ended up losing. And I, it's mostly because we were catching lap traffic. It wasn't smooth passing lap traffic. And then I couldn't get around yep. him. And 
and he beat me, so I took second. I lost. So how many races have you done this year? Roughly. Fifteen, yeah. maybe. Fifteen? I think so. Something like that. Sounds about right. Holy cow. How many times have you landed on the podium? All of them. Um, have you not have you missed the podium at all? Yeah, I missed the podium at a at a Budu race up in I was fourth at, at a race oh, up there. Poor Sam. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I, I've had a good start of the year. We, I might just quit now and, because it's not going to get any better. Well done, Hepler. Well done. We need to get a stage race or two into you because that's... I just did the gravel stage race. Well, I'm saying like road stage and race. And I, w- I won with, all three with, stages. With TT, yeah, that's right. So, so we can get you on a TT uh, bike for an actual stage race. No. He's going to Baker City. <laughs> that's like the worst thing that I do is time trial. I know, but we need to get you on a TT bike then. Yeah. Anyway. What, uh, what's next? There's actually a road race this week up near Olympia. Okay. Vance and Creek. Vance Creek uh, road race. Oh. It's part sold of the, out, yeah? It's sold out. Teammates yeah. going? Yeah. I do have some teammates, but because there's field size limits, there's um, only 30 people per field can okay. start, and all my teammates are in the – there's two 40-plus masters groups. All my teammates are in the other group. So I'm in the group without any teammates. Okay. Did you try maybe petitioning the promoter to see if you can get a flip flop with somebody else in the other group? Everybody's kind of trying to do that, so we're kind of waiting till game day to see if they'll let us do that. Gotcha. So it's a little screwy. Okay. Huh. And it's a forty plus uh, one, two, three, four field. So Just the whole whole crew. That what's makes, the like, what's the breakdown of the course? It's um, it's a thirteen mile loop. And I think our field does four laps, so it's like fifty-eight. It's fifty. It's a longer road. It's like race. fifty-eight miles or something like that, and it's only three hundred feet um, per lap. Up, per lap. Really? So it's fairly flat. It's a little rolly punches. Reach out to the promoter, tell him to flip flop the group around, and ask him if he's got an extra spot. <laughs> I mean, yes, that's what I want. Yeah, to yeah hear. that'd be interesting. <laughs> no, I bet he isolated you on purpose. <laughs> no, the, he, he purely did it by um, totally random. But no, it was just how registration, oh, registration order. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so like like Ian Gibson and and uh, Chris Hitchcock, they're in the other field. I'm in this field, um, but it's with like Rob Torni and Greg Steele, and and there's some guys. Those are hitters that those I used hitters. to love racing against. Yeah, yeah. You, you can get Greg. Hey, that's if I can stay with them. Yeah, I can. I have proven not to make that good of decisions on a road bike just yet. <laughs> Greg's pretty strong on the he's flat stuff. Strong. He's gonna hang with. Your one two yeah. guys, no problem. He's yeah. got punch at the end too, so yeah, yeah, could be interesting. Could be interesting. Cool. You just you just put out three twelve for an hour and fifteen minutes, though. So. You can hang. <laughs> yeah. You can hang. But then, uh, yeah. So that race ended up being a ton of fun. I did uh, a great job. Then I went over to uh, Sisters Oregon and uh, rode Mackenzie Pass. Oh, I saw those pictures. Yeah, I, you wrote something in there, and it was like I. I did this ride strictly for I the. I purely did it for the snow wall and pictures. I'm totally <laughs> on board for that. <laughs> there's like a there's like a 25 yeah. foot snow wall yeah, yeah, at yeah. the top. That I'm, I'm totally gonna do the same yeah. thing. I should have. Like, I had just... no business getting on a bike and riding 30 more miles with 2,500 feet of elevation gain. But does that snow wall completely melt in the yeah. summer? Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of That's, snow though. Yeah. Know. Was that on like my show? <laughs> I'd be amazed to watch them how they clear that. They they have to wait till part of it is uh, melted before they can. Yeah. Snowplug because it's on a like tight corner too. Right, where the totally snow like, that's is. a massive snow wall. Yeah, yep. it's pretty it's like Colorado esque. Yeah. What what day was that? Was that yesterday? It was Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. You should have called me and been like, "Let's go do the snow wall." Well, it was spur of the moment. I it's know. like I'm not dead. I should go spin my legs out. Wait, the snow wall's the still snow up. Snow wall. I want to go see the snow wall. You have to ride 14 miles to get to it. Yeah. What do we need? <laughs> what 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 video or photo should we get? Like, do you think a drone shot with a snow wall would be interesting? That would be killer. A 360 shot would be kind of cool too. Very. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we need all, all of them. Uh, just let's go take pictures. Let's of do them. all of it. All. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Three-hour drive from here. Whatever. And then you ride a couple hours. Sweet. That's it. Then I rode with Jake, and we found new roads and got KOMs on it. Did Yay. You? Yeah. What road? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was like seventy eighth Street. Some somewhere random. in some random road. We're like, hey, this there's kind of a tailwind. Let's let's hit this as hard as we can. <laughs> and so we, we hit as hard as we could. Nice. That was fun. I think Lance already touched on everything. Um I what else did I do this past week? We did the, the mountain bike route or family stuff. Family well, yeah, we did Mother's Day stuff. Family. Yeah, uh, flogging ride was probably the highlight of the. Well, no, the mountain biking was pretty fun too with those kids. That was fun. Yeah, that was a good time. The flogging ride, though, I think this week we could 
probably have north of 60 people out there. It's, yep. it's going to be warm and sunny. Yep. I, I still like my idea up. of having like signs on the road that's like Thursday night, 60 cyclists, you know, out yeah. here letting, you know, cars know that that's a thing that's recurring. Yep. And maybe a, it's like a summer. SAG vehicle, some hazard lights yeah. going. Maybe. I don't know. It's not a bad idea. Um, but maybe we could go over to that guy's house who screamed at me already and just tell him, hey, just so you know, <laughs> so <laughs> 60, <laughs> 60 of your favorite people are going to be rolling through here on Thursday you evenings. Got <laughs> you got screamed at last time? No, it was when we did a large mountain thing. Oh, yeah, okay. he didn't like that us. That is just such a fun ride, though. I'm oh, having yeah. so much fun yeah. doing it. This is week nine already coming up, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. And it just keeps like getting better each week. Last week we had rain. It was still a blast. Still good. We came back, and we were just all covered in like road grime and dirt yes. and mud. Just like... Yeah, it was it was funny. I walked to my wife's like, whoa. (laughs) So cool. Let's move on to some bigger and better things. How about a little Patreon drawing? You guys want to do some Patreon stuff? Patreon. Um, Yeah, it's we're getting a little bit thinner here on the Patreon jar because we've been pulling names out of it, trying to get a little bit of parody here because we've got so much stuff in that bin. Um, We want to have everybody have a chance so that Rob Buck doesn't win everything. (laughs) Christopher Real. All right, Chris Christopher. Rea. Yep, um, I believe he is the one that you actually met, Lance, out at. I the recognize that name quite a bit. Vancouver yeah. Lake. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. At the yeah. Duathlon. At the yeah. Duathlon. Yeah. Very Came nice up guy. And a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned something about somebody, but it was him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nice Christopher, you, Christopher, we've got a nice bed for you to come down here and pick. There's actually even a helmet in there now. Believe it or not. Oh, grab the helmet, Chris. It's it's good for the helmet. Lightly used, but it's still lightly. a nice helmet nonetheless. <laughs> still so. helmet. As long as it's not lightly crashed, that's all I'm <laughs> Not crashed at all. I had to buy a new helmet this week. Yeah. Because I bounced my head off the pavement <laughs> last weekend. Anyway. If you're interested in becoming a patron, go to dialpodcast.com. Click on the Patreon link there and choose a patron that works out best for you. To all of our patrons, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. And I am going to be reaching out to some of you because we want to have um, the listener hotline come back and I want to use our patrons for that. So... Nice. Oh, yeah. Stay tuned. Yes. Nice. Stay tuned. Excellent. <laughs> cool. Let's uh, let's move on to uh, this Jam stuff right here. here. Oh, yeah. I'm all about having fun. You know, mm-hmm. get Keep a on. cocktails. Keep them on. Start a fire. I saw Anchorman two recently. Let me go to Sea <laughs> World. Take oh. my pants. Oh, off. oh right. took his pants off again. It's an Champ Bailey. Movie. Champ Bailey here. What's Word up? of the day. Taco Vanderhorn. Yes. <laughs> Taco Vanderhorn. <laughs> it's Horn. It's two O's. Whatever. I don't There's know what it is. <laughs> oh, real quick. Okay. Hey, look at that. Christopher's actually watching the live stream. <laughs> ah, yeah, Chime Chris. <laughs> That's Winner, awesome. winner, chicken dinner. Also, shout out to Cliff. <laughs> How's it going, Cliff? And Jerry. Jerry, yep. <laughs> okay, so big news. Uh, the tour. What is it? The Giro the d'Italia. Giro d'Italia. I'm the only Italian one here. I feel like I should be talking here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Giro d'Italia well, started this week. Gyro. Um, <laughs> gyro. 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 We're on day three <laughs> as of recording. Uh, the first stage, um, Philippa Ghana is just showing his time Dude. trial prowess. He is a I wish I could beast. just post up me, okay. David, and Dustin's tech stream whenever there's a grand tour. It's <laughs> hilarious. Oh, it's it? t- it just random updates. Like, Dustin just, he's like, in case anybody was wondering, Ghana still rides fast. It was <laughs> only like a nine minute effort because it was a prologue, and nine, yeah. uh, still, uh, Ghana averaged like 550 watts. 590. Pardon me. Oh, 590, 590 watts. Seriously? 590 yes. watts. <laughs> For nine minutes? I was to, so, so you, you all remember Kit back on this. Oh, Kit yeah. is. But he's even a better cycling historian than I am, and he would definitely say. I mean, he he was trying to compare efforts. He said that might have been the most impressive prologue ride ever. Like, does that count period. the motor that period. was that's built into the bike, or is it just so pure we legs? talked about fat? So Cancellara definitely has had efforts that are very close to that. You know, yeah. I mean, and, and even pre power meter era. But like, I mean, five hundred ninety watts for nine minutes it's is crazy, and it's it, the the position he holds. If anybody watches Ghana, like. I mean, the guy is he's in, amazing. He's in the most sleek position you can get in. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, the second stage was actually won by a former cyclocrosser. Yeah, Alpecin Phoenix got their first. Yeah, Grand Alpecin tour Phoenix win. got yeah. their first tour win. What was his name? Millie. I'm trying to. God, find I, I already forgot. What's the cycle? Millie with all the cyclocross guys. Cause they're they're they freaking rock. That's they're what the deal cycling. is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> come on. Where, yeah. where are the triathletes? That's what it. Is. Yeah. Well, they're, Cam Worf. Cam Worf is the only one flying. They're peeing in their wetsuit <laughs> in the, down at the lake. We got <laughs> busy peeing in there. We got Cam Worf flying Cam, that Cam flag, Worf. and that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> And then today was won by uh, Taco Vander Horen. Yep. Okay. Amazing. That guy. <laughs> he, oh. 
he he uh, he he broke away with like 15k to go yep. and was definitely getting reeled in and held off the. I love that he yeah. held him off you by like four that. seconds. He just barely the guy, held the him guy off. he was with too. The the amazing part of him holding that off. The guy he's with, he attacks this guy to drop him with like what was had to be north of a thousand watt right. effort. Right, and you're like, oh well, there was his match. He's yeah. done. And this guy just held on somehow. <laughs> was that this morning? <laughs> was that this morning? Yeah, it was stage? this morning. Yeah, yeah. it was this. Morning. Morning. Taco. Taco. Taco Vanderhorn. T A C O. Dutch Taco. rider on they, a, I believe, Italian team. He's on an Italian yeah, team. Yeah, they were call, They were saying it Taco, or oh, okay. they, they were pronouncing it differently, but, yeah, but it was like, no, 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 no. But no, we're no. in America. Taco. We're calling him his, Taco. His name Too is bad. For it's sure Monday. Taco. Yeah. This could yeah. have been Taco Tuesday, and it's not. It's Taco Monday. Tomorrow. Yeah. He could still do well tomorrow. He could still win tomorrow. No, that, he's going to be that dead guy's last getting tomorrow. dropped out the bat tomorrow. Is he wearing the pink jersey right now? No, Philly Pagana still has it. Yeah. Here's the big question for Ineos. How long do they want to keep that? I mean, do they want to defend? Because here, I mean, Ineos Not for is, him. Ineos's plan is obviously to win. Yes. I mean, their, their plan but is to win. for who? Well, and that's, and that's the thing is it, it doesn't almost matter because they'd have to still play defensive tactics with stage one to stage 21 or whatever. I mean, that's a long time to keep the pink. I wonder as soon as they get in the mounts, if there's like so somebody else taking yeah, this from us. We don't, wanna, we don't want to do the work anymore. Yeah. So crazy. Did you wake up and watch it live? Um, I watched the last 20K. Just okay. while I was doing work stuff. Watch, tell everybody morning. how you're okay. watching it. Uh, I'm watching on GCM Plus. GCM Plus. GCM you... Plus, and I got the deal when they it's the the deal's done now. But they were doing a twenty bucks for the year deal. That's for so a bit. cheap and so it worth so it. Nice. That's great. So I get to watch the Giro, the Vuelta, and the Tour, which is great. They're carrying the. Are they carrying TDF? The tour? That's the rumors that they're no, carrying TDF. It's it, it going to be the live, or is it going to be like a? Probably not. It it'll be live on either Peacock or on uh, NBC Sports. Yeah. NBC Sports one's the one I do every yeah. year. And I'm well, just they, happy that they got the Giro live, which they, is amazing. Yeah, yeah. They, I, I think they turned off NBC Sports, if I'm not mistaken. They did. They well, it. Peacock is now NBC's yeah. um, streaming service. Right. And it's included if you have if you already had. It might be worth cable. it because yeah. I was paying for NBC Sports, and uh-huh. it's probably the same price as Peacock. I'm, I'm gonna drop yeah. NBC Sports and or just get just, Peacock. Yeah, Peacock, I'll probably yeah. do that, and then mm-hmm. I'll probably just use it for the summer block, maybe. Of I don't know. We'll see. Maybe. Yeah. Cool. Because they also have The Office, which you guys know if you're <sighs> history, you know, if you're watching the podcast <laughs> for you're a long time. A, if you're a history buff, you know The Office, yeah. And uh, <laughs> that's important in our family. Uh-huh. And the, also, like, Parks and Rec and stuff like that. Is Parks and Rec show. Classic, Another yeah. excellent show. Yeah. All right. There was also a mountain bike race, a World Cup mountain bike race in Germany or something like Good that. Vanderbilt. And uh, Matthew Vanderpool lined up. He, he hadn't raced in a couple weeks, so he went to the mountain bike race and... Uh, mm-hmm. There was a short track race two days before. Vanderpool won the uh, short track race. Yeah. But um, in the uh, World Cup race, Vanderpool did not win. He ended up like seventh, actually. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, and I can't remember the name, guy's name. So Isn't it interesting that like the story, These, the story is, 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 yeah, is Vanderpool, Vanderpool, Vanderpool did not win, win and not the guy who won. <laughs> uh, Leona Lecomte and Victor Koretsky, they're, they're the two who won. And Koretsky actually won by... Um, like a last ditch sprint in like the last corner and got around the guy. Pretty amazing. Tom Pidcock also showed up and did the race. He ended up like is Pidcock going to do the double at the Olympics? Uh, he might be. He's like 21 years old. He's what, the most what, talented. What's he have to lose? He's the most talented cyclist in the world right now, in my opinion. <laughs> if you're looking at young, like who is the most talented? Tom Pidcock is a guy who could literally in his early 20s jump to any event right yeah. now. And the, Grand Tour lead. The thing I love about Remco's Pidcock. Close, but... Guess what bike Pidcock raced. The BMC really? four stroke. Really? It unlabeled, was, right? It was unlabeled because yeah. His, yeah, yeah, yeah. his team it's has a Pinarello or deal. Something. Yeah, Pinarello yeah. deal. And they don't have a mountain bike. I was about to ask, does Pinarello make a mountain bike? <laughs> no. no. He's, what, when he's, are we on, do... he's on the road bike just in a, <laughs> puts a 40 in his road bike. <laughs> Sorry, Pinarello told me I have to race this. You got to race this. <laughs> when are we going to do our like Tour de France like oh. preview prediction competition? Right, Next like month. The, day, yeah. the day the Giro's done, we got we to gotta plan we'll that. Do we, I just feel like we should have a whole podcast cast dedicated to like our the predictions yeah. and then, our poor then we have it written down like you usually write it down each year and then someone's yep. the loser yep yep it's yep. usually me yep. evan is the loser <laughs> um also there was a triathlon st george yes went off that was a good as one. we so we didn't talk about the wait when we talked about last week we did no, we'll we did not again, mention though. we did not mention <laughs> the matt, pro race matt talked about st george did last you talk week? about tro- okay so yes, i'm gonna talk did. about it now because i have watched that finish. All of you cyclists listen to this. They're like, oh, I don't care about triathlon. Yeah, there was a sprint watch, finish at the end, right? Watch the last 5K <laughs> yeah. of that. 
and tell me you don't get emotional watching that. You cry a little bit. Those two men cried and embraced at the end of that race. That that they cried. Those are two grown men who raced each other, finished, like collapsed at the line, and then embraced and cried. That was like selling. That it, was though. like me and Court Johnson at the finish. There you go. Just practice. embrace and cry. We were actually yard sailed on the ground, like yeah. dry heaving, because we were both we'd gone so there you deep. Go. So it's the same kind of thing. It is. Yes. Yeah. Same type of effort too, and same, same type of, of athletes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Olympic level. Effort. Olympic level. <laughs> just like you. Just like me and Court, fifty year old. Old. There you go. Over the hill. Just same same idea. Just same <laughs> thing. Exact, same, exact thing. same effort. Don't burst my bubble. It Evan? actually is the. It, I got a bubble I'm living in, and I'm staying. It in actually it. might have felt harder for you two. <laughs> That's. I think you two actually might have dug dip deeper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chad Bailey out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, our topic for the day. You guys ready for this? Guess what's right around the corner? Summer riding summer. season. Summer, baby. And it doesn't have to be just some riding. It can be triathlon and oh, stuff. Okay. If you guys want to get into that a little bit, I know that the oh, cover will. art like <laughs> kind of left out all the triathlon stuff. Oh, there's a wetsuit on there. It's just half. <laughs> no. Choppy, no, choppy that's water. That's a base layer. Very no, choppy no, summer no, no, waters. No, that's a wetsuit. <laughs> that's what I wear in my triathlons. Just, <laughs> just the top. Nothing else. Buns Nothing out. else. Buns, buns out. out. <laughs> Got to tan the buns. <laughs> so we're going to get into summer preparedness. And there's pretty much three... Point five different things that I want to get into. Um, the first thing is going to be what we suggest people have. Like, what are some of the like the absolute essentials that people have, and what mm-hmm. of those essentials? What do we recommend? The next thing is um, what are some new stuff coming out, so that mm-hmm. maybe you're thinking about getting some, but something's coming out very soon. You know, Matt Legrand over here, he's got all the inside scoop on everything now. I don't. If everybody I, goes to him, and says, "Hey, Matt, Legrand, they well, you always are stuff." Me, they're like, "What's coming out?" Is I'm they're waiting. Everyone's waiting for the nine fifty five from Garmin, and I'm like. I will talk about that because I don't know anything. Is if that a new some, triathlon watch? Yeah, but yeah, like okay. if I know something's coming out, I won't talk about it. Why? Because, because you, you get in trouble? can't. Because I don't want to burn relationships with yeah. the yeah. vendors yeah. that are sometimes letting me review their products. Yeah, gotcha. So. And then the, the last thing is uh, stuff that we are personally going to be picking up this summer, and yep. that would be the three things. And the, the point five is if you're doing any racing, what are some stuff that you need for the summer racing? Mm-hmm. So. Let's start off with a, a, a list. We'll just run around the table a few times here of things that we think people need to make sure that they have so that they are ready to go ride their bicycle and do travel and stuff this summer. I'll or, start. Uh, go ahead, Matt. I think that all of us potentially need to order up some new sunscreen because each year your sunscreen <laughs> is supposed to expire. Oh, really? Now, your, your tan lines are pretty good. I'm going to give those a 4 out of 10 because here's yeah. the thing. There's two, there's two different Two, you have, the two different online. jerseys. You have a triathlon line? Race, cut. Not a tra- race, race cut, cut. Race cut. Race cut and training <laughs> cut. Training cut. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here's the thing. I think in Mine's another month, strong. in another month, too those things are going to be, they'll be razor sharp. You'll mm-hmm. get those lines Yes, they will sharp. be. Yeah, they will. <laughs> sunscreen uh, is a good one. Sunscreen. So here's the thing. Yeah. So your sunscreen is, it doesn't have like an indefinite lifespan. If you're like me, you have, you know, sunscreen from, you know, 1997 <laughs> and you're like, this will work. <laughs> Yeah. Right, <laughs> grease <But> it up. <laughs> what my wife and I have been doing is writing the year on the bottle oh, itself when we buy yeah. it, and then like you know, sometimes you know I say that it expires after a year, or whatever. Yeah. But like usually I'll push it. You and know? as so and like as we know, Kristen's Kristen's skin sh- genetically is much better than than your pale white, yeah. hasty. Yeah, and your <laughs> and poor <laughs> kids seem to yeah. have inherited that too. And, and yeah, this sh- is well, Dash. I think Dash has, has a, a yeah has a little like, to his um, skin. Yeah, <laughs> Ethan's definitely. Ethan no, but the. You know, my wife is actually better about wearing sunscreen, too, than I am. I always, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm scared of having sunscreen, dri- like, dip into my mm-hmm. eyes. Yeah, like, it's a reasonable that's the fear. worst. And so I put sunscreen on for biking. I put it underneath the eyes only, and then I wash my hands so that I don't accidentally get Football this Football style. Yeah. Does anybody else have a weird, I have, oh, God, I have such a weird sensory thing with my hands. Anytime I have don't, lotion or me. sunscreen on my hands, it drives me it, it, like insane. I Half the reason why I don't hands. like putting it on in the first place is just getting Dude, it on my hands. T- yeah. Cassie's like, <laughs> you're <laughs> an idiot. Why do you care about that? I was like, I never let lotion touch my skin because it's got to be on my fingertips the then. Lotion. And it drives me nuts. <laughs> so puts the, <laughs> puts, puts the lotion on its skin okay. or else but, it gets the hose again. <laughs> and the hose better get all that off. Or I'm in tra- <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, sunscreen. Do it, people. It's a good one. Evan, what do you got? Nutrition. This is, I think during the winter, okay. I do a really good job of letting that go by the wayside Me too. in terms of making sure that I have enough tailwind for me, you know, everybody's different and all that, making sure that you got figured out like, okay, if I'm a high salt sweater or I know that, you know, I run into dehydration issues on longer rides, make sure that you know what kind of formula you want to be going with going into the summer because as the rides get longer, they get hotter, 
all of a sudden you're out there with Lance doing a five hour gravel ride (laughs) and you're still like rocking water bottles and like one Coke in your pocket. Like you're probably going to bonk hard that you wouldn't have during the fall when it's beautiful and 50 and you don't have to worry about it as much. Okay. I rode with Jake yesterday. It ended up being almost three hour ride, like two and a half hour ride. Guess what I took with me? Like a water water bottle. A water bottle. bottle. Yeah. Oh, I've done that before. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I had no, no calories, no anything. I just, I didn't, we really hadn't. We didn't plan. We didn't know what we were doing. And then we just got together and we're like, oh, let's go here. Let, oh. yep. So it ended up being like 50 miles for me and like 45 for Jake. And um, yeah, I was uh, thirsty. I was hungry uh, at the yeah. end. I was very hungry yeah. at the end. Yeah, summer riding sneaks up on you with not like having, it's like nice not out. being stocked up on. It's nice and you want to just stay on the bike. Right. Well, I get into the bad habit of like during the wintertime, it's just cold and you're not sweating as much yeah. and you yep. just don't drink very much of a water fluid, bottle. If yeah. that. And then all of a sudden it's summertime and you're like, you forget to drink and you yeah. get all crampy and whatnot. On that ride yesterday, I took one swig off my water bottle and I had food with me, but I didn't touch it. But I was I was fine. I didn't and it was two and a half hours. Yeah, that yeah. was fine. For the triathletes, this is important because I've realized for myself, this is actually why I'm doing my key workout still indoors right now is I want to control my sweat rate because you get off the bike after a two, three hour hard, like sweet spot type ride. And then go and try to run 12 miles after that. Like that's when the cramps really hit is is on the run. So did you guys notice that Gatorade has this new product? It's like a sweat patch that you can put on your arm and you can check your sweat rates and you can check your sweat content. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I ordered some. And I'm going to do a review. Cool. Yeah, I'll yeah. do a review. On, what'd you do? Just lick your arm? Yeah, just lick your arm. Just lick your arm. <laughs> taste salty. Taste salty. It's not a bad idea. Probably need, sure. to, <laughs> probably need some Gatorade. Well, just look at your clothes. Yeah. <laughs> if you get done, a little bit with sunscreen. There's salt and crusted yeah. the entire time. You know? <laughs> yeah, cool. So know your nutrition, take your nutrition, have your nutrition dialed in. Probably yep. not a good thing if we're going to talk about the racing stuff to try new nutrition probably before not the time, races. Yeah. So right now is actually unless, the time that you want to be. Unless it's in your first season of racing, which I do coach with this, their first yeah. season of racing. I'm like, we're going to have to try new things. Yeah. So. Don't try new stuff if you're going to go out and do like a, a century for the first yeah, time no. in a long time or some yeah. ultra something or other. Yeah, yep. good times. Know your formula and yep. just stick with it. Lance, go ahead. Um, I, don't forget your flat kit. Um, I, I, I destroyed a, a saddlebag recently, like a zipper ripped out and I haven't replaced a saddlebag yet. So just go I, back pocket, like an actual cyclist. That's what Why I've been do doing. <laughs> I, I, I put one tube in and then I have yeah. a little zipper pouch that has your CO2 as well. CO2 and a tire lever and a, and a yeah. tool. And that goes in on top of it. So yeah, my, one, my center pocket is just taken up by my flat kit because I don't, I don't have another yeah, and if it's been guy. a while since you've been outside riding, it might not be a bad idea to do some inventory. Make sure that your you know CO two hasn't already been used yeah. or it's an old. Oh, I've done that before. Tube yeah, that's gone right. down or like the little puncture holes. In yeah, there. an old tube that flatted on you and you just stuffed it back in there. That kind of stuff. Make sure that you've yeah. got a, a multi tool sure with all go. the the pieces and parts on there that work with your specific bike. So that's that's pretty important. That's it. Cool. Um, I'm going to tell people that it might not be a bad idea to make sure that you've got a light that works because you still want to use a flashy light out there so people can see you and make sure that that's for the front and the rear. And if you've got a few extra bucks and it's uh, important to you to, you know, be safe. Think about getting the Varia radar. Yep. The Garmin yeah. Varia radar is yep. fantastic. We're, it really we're is. four for four yeah. on the Varia radar. Yeah, we radar all have the Varia right and now. Yeah. I don't like to yep. ride without it. Yeah. So I actually have two of them. Cassie's got one too. too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've got a couple of them. Um, but yeah, yep. make sure your lights are up to speed. What else you got, Matt? Uh, I have a whole bunch of stuff. But um, I would say now's a good time to check your tires because the road conditions right now are gross. You know, a lot of glass in the, you know, in, right in the bike lane. Uh, and so I would say now is a great time to have a look at that and see if you need new tires at yep. this point. And then, you know, typically what I would say is maybe not exactly right now, but maybe like in a month is a perfect time to change your tires because then the roads start to get kind of smooth and nice and clear. And you can go a lot longer on, you know, on puncture yeah. type stuff. Of course, I think that's tubeless. This, might be different this drives me nuts this time of year with glass. It's like, what, does everybody just like go to the lake and it's just, eh, just drink it in the car here and just chuck this out the window here? Is that the only reason that we have I, so much glass on the road? I don't understand why yeah. there's so I mean, there's This time of year comes many, around, there's so much glass on the road. Th- there's that many people Idiots. that don't care yeah. out there. Yep. That, that blows me it's away, It's just too. one guy. He just travels a it's lot. It's got to be. He <laughs> travels a lot and drinks a oh lot of gosh. glass bottles. <laughs> Not even beer. He's just drinking just old classic Coke. <laughs> he just chucks out the classic. <laughs> I'm going to go one up on that tire thing. And if you haven't done it yet, think about tubeless. strongly think yeah. about going tubeless. It is so much better than mm-hmm. tubed. If you're lingering, if you're a holdout, 
it, it's time. The only time that I would tell somebody to maybe not think about it is if their wheels that they have just are not tubeless compatible right. and you don't have yeah. the, the income or the funds to, to throw out a, a new wheel set. Um, if you've got a, a set of wheels that are probably, what, three, four, five years old, chances are they're, they're going to be tubeless compatible. Probably. And you should be riding tubeless. Mm-hmm. 100% on yes. that one my road bike needs to go tubeless my tt <laughs> bike is now tubeless yeah, yeah. and yep. my cross bike yep. yeah check your helmets folks check your helmets oh yeah. that's a good one those things they say that they have an expiration date the we've done this topic before in the past um it, people sometimes say it's two to three years some people will say five to seven years i personally try and change my helmet out every three years so i'm coming up on needing a new helmet coming yeah. up on five i'm in years. that i, I change mine out every six months <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mostly because there's a giant dent in it yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, it's probably a good time to consider that and uh, just go do a, yeah. an inspection if you see any kind of delamination, cracking, uh, foam doesn't look all that great, or it's just been a long time. It's probably time. So yeah, what else you got, Matt? I think we kind of have touched on this, but if you know, I think a lot of the people that listen to the podcast are pretty bike savvy. So um, this is kind of a twofer, but like now it's a good time to check your chain, check your chain for wear, see how it's looking, yep. see if you know you're going to save your components a good bit of. Uh, life if you can change out that chain on a regular basis maybe now's the time to check that out um, you know it's pretty simple with just the chain checker tool to check those the other thing that I will say is if you're listening to this podcast and you're not like super super bike tech savvy and I think you know I wrote myself into this it's like maybe this is the time that you bring your bike into a place maybe like the dialed cycling <laughs> lab here yep. and just say like I need a tune-up yep I was you gonna know? add to that and say that very thing and like a tune-up kind and of thing yes and now's the time Summer to do it because up. a lot of bike shops yep, they're, get swamped. they're yeah. one week to four weeks out dependent upon where you're mm-hmm. at in terms of how yeah. soon they can get a bike back to so don't yep. think that you've got a big ride coming up on Saturday that you can go in or on Friday, Wednesday yeah. or Friday yeah, and get it tuned point. up you're probably going to be without your bike for a few yep. weeks. So get yeah. it done now. So just get ahead it on curve. Monday and don't yep. need it. That's why Sunday. I don't want to bring my bike in. <laughs> this is why I, I don't want to leave it here for right. a couple of weeks. This is why I always bring it in before I know seven to 10 days before I feel like I'm going to need it. <laughs> Plus a fresh tune up is so nice. It's yeah. just yeah. butter. It's quiet. It works better. Oh, yeah. You're going faster. Get it done. Yeah. Yeah. I think going going off of Matt's note there, so this is going back to the triathlon world or cyclists that are, you know, gearing up for like stage races, as we were just talking about. If you have a TT bike or if you have a triathlon bike, probably time to start getting comfortable with your fit. See if you need to adjust the fit a little bit and see if like, you know, there's, there's different parts you might have to buy to adjust the fit. Um, when we're talking about, uh, you know, we were talking about Felipe Ghana's position as the, the TT position ch- changes and evolves over time. If you feel like, hey, I really want to cut down my bike split, it is a lot of free speed. Now, it takes time and training in it. So if you've got your Ironman coming up in August or September, let's say, you should not be making your TT adjustments in July. You should be making your TT adjustments in May right, right now. Right. You should be, you know, if you need to tilt the arrow bars more up, if you need different nutritional placement, if you need anything like that, you need to start doing it now so that you have time to adapt to that position. Because, you know, road bike road bike shifts are, are similar. If you're getting new equipment on your road bike, you need to be riding it before you race. But you're racing almost every weekend if you're a cyclist. If you're a triathlete, you're planning on a four-month build of training. You should not be three-month building a training in your old position and plan on switching it late game. I got a question. Yeah. It it looks like over the last several years that arm position has changed drastically. Drastically, yes. For, for time trial position. Oh, you want to see a true drastic change? Look at the early 90s compared to where we're at right now. I mean, arms yeah. used to be like flat. Oh, flat or, or tilted or down. Or tilted down. Jan Ulrich famously, I mean, literally had his hands tilted. I think he was at like a 10 degree tilt down wow. on his bike, on his Bianchi. Yeah. And now they're like... Like praying, praying mantis, mantis all the is, way up here. Is that yep. because it just it cuts the wind a little differently? So think of it this way: is and this is their their guys do a lot better you know videos on this. But as the triathlon position has changed, um, an, uh, Anthony Costas was a French guy who really first at Kona, in my opinion, kind of went into this crazy praying mantis position like here, and people were like making fun of him, but he's right out the front. Yeah, strong guy. But what they were talking about is this: if I can shrink the area that touches the wind first that's that's great if i'm down here as you can see like if you're watching this camera this is a massive frontal area it hits your chest and face first this hits my hands first 
I can get my head behind my hands. It foils that frontal area as opposed to here where my chest is what's hitting so first. So the drag coefficient just goes down if exactly. those hands are up there a little bit better. Exactly. Yep. Is that a pretty comfortable position or more comfortable? For me, it is. But yeah. you you got to get used to it. It's it's not a, And that's why I'm saying if you're planning on making these switches, and I have a ton of my travel yeah. friends are like, oh, I want to look like you know, so-and-so. I want to I want to look like Sam Long does on his bike. He's like, yeah, that <laughs> takes a long time. That You don't just jump into that position. How about yeah. power production? Can you generate a little bit more power in that position, you think? I, I can personally because I'm able to pull yeah, a little bit better that's what i was thinking yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i think that the praying mantis position tests sometimes faster and sometimes slower so you, i know eric you, lagerstrom has said he tested slower in that position he? but um, i'm seeing enough guys switch to it that i think if you're taking an average i yeah, think it's pretty solid i agree with that yeah. i think that it's more popular uh I it think, makes more sense aerodynamically uh, to me i don't know i think flat also i mean if you think about it like your arm being flat there's not a lot of wind hitting that particular yeah. spot but then yeah. you hit these big you know Cylinder it's objects. It's going to depend on where you can get your I mean, shoulders. My biceps think, yeah. are pretty massive. You're huge. you're huge, dude. And so huge. And cylinder <laughs> objects are very bad Tiny for forearms, aerodynamics. Though. Just sm- very small forearms. So for Matt me, needs to get out here. For you know? me, it's much more comfortable to be in that like praying mantis position. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't think it's necessarily always faster. So yeah. The other thing I've noticed is n- now the risers are really super high. Yep. Right. Instead of being right down on your stem, those mm-hmm. those rests. There are some guys bringing it up. That yeah. are bringing it up. Does that like open up the hip hip angle a little bit more so you can generate more power? What's the? I think it. I think it, it allows to you to tuck the head a little bit better. Actually, right. it's okay. all about that when shrug. you're really low, it's okay. really hard to get your head down too because you're already straining in that position so much. If you bring yourself up here, it's real easy to. To shrug. I got gotcha. you. The shrug. shrug is actually yeah. a lot faster. Oh yeah, the it's shrug will save you way more money like than any helmet watts will. Or something yeah. crazy. Just to get your your shoulders Turtle. closer to your you're, ears, you're bringing Turtle. your whole body a lot more narrow, and this becomes a lot more foiled. Instead of up here, it's there, and that helmet foils back. Well, if you, and that's different because it just that's head position. But yeah, sometimes that's um, true. the other thing I'm seeing right now is people wearing their helmet up higher. Yeah, like so. Like well, that's the, what Roglic was apparently are, trying to do. Was it? He looked that, horrible. That, that's what people were saying. Is that that's what Roglic was doing? And I thought but he just looked awful. But he looked awful. But <laughs> but the the reason, disheveled. He, the looked, reason, he looked like he lost his helmet. Yeah. <laughs> but the reason you tilt that helmet is so that the uh, your pointy yeah. helmet falls in line with your back. And if it doesn't do that, like it was in his case, remember he was doing that climb. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, then it doesn't help you. Yeah. So I think also just when you're not Pogacha. When you're not Pogaccia, yeah, his problem tough. is was yeah. he wasn't Pogaccia. He wasn't Pogaccia. That was his. Uh, he, he, he wasn't Slovenian <laughs> enough. Apparently, Pogaccia is more Slovenian than him. Way more. Um, but yeah, I think that we should look at your position yeah, sometime, definitely, and play around with it because we have some aerodynamic As the bike tools gets together. Can, then yes, because yeah. I'm tilting myself up now. What is it? 15 degrees, Jake? Is okay. that what that thing goes? Yeah, I think so. The BMC yeah. adjustment. Some, mm, 10 degrees. 10 degrees. Cool. Yeah. And I think yeah. we should look at your helmet and how it definitely. how it plays in with your back and alignment yeah. that way. Just pedal harder. That's Go faster. Not, that's what I keep on saying, but apparently that's not the cool thing Just now. Just overcome. <laughs> yeah. overcome. No, spend money. Don't pedal faster. Well, yeah. as, as everybody's now running 110 in the pro, pro field, I'm like, oh, apparently you need to, you know, yes. be insanely <laughs> fresh when you come off the bike. So. Get a motor. Yeah. Lance, you got anything else? No. Yeah, I got one more thing. Um, start getting yourself well first of all go out and get yourself either strava or ride with gps and then start familiarizing yourself with how to uh, set up routes and build routes yeah and oh, you can good. look at yeah that's you can really look cool. at heat maps as to where a lot of local cyclists ride and there's a good reason why they mm-hmm. generally ride there because there's probably less traffic so it's gonna be a little bit safer plus yeah. it's a little bit more fun to build to build those laps and the computers these days are fantastic yeah, yeah. they'll we, walk you through everything and tell yep. you exactly where to go I love and wahoo's maps yeah. it's so awesome right now yeah, it's yeah. a lot of fun so that's mm-hmm. something that I would suggest is uh, you look into those two. Uh, Tells you when you're hitting platforms. KOMs. Star the KOMs. There you which go. I just learned about this last year. Strava is freaking awesome. It is. It you really guys is. With your Strava premium. Yeah. <laughs> Killing me. Yeah. Awesome. Um, let's jump into some of the things that we know are coming out that we're not under embargo to not talk okay. about. Um, what You guys got anything? You guys know anything coming out? Cool. Anything special? Um, cool. I've been trying to see if Nike, so... If like there's going to be oh, any, yeah. I'm I'm trying to see the next company that's trying to throw out a carbon sh- like like a really really good carbon shoe. Right now, in my opinion, the 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 premier lineup is you got the Hoka Mach whatever four yep. I think, you got the Nike Next Percent and Alpha Fly, and you got the Saucony Endorphin Pro I think is right there. Those three, somebody can get mad at me if there's another one in there. I don't think Adidas falls into that yet. I don't think I see enough people really liking the Adidas yet. Yeah. So I'm wondering if Adidas is going to really throw in a shoe that's that's race war, you know, like right there with those. 
or if maybe Ace. I I think Asics has something that they have out right they now, have but something I don't know. But I'm not seeing enough people wear it, so the that's Hulk, the that's where my eyes are. Is like who's going to be the next one to throw in some ridiculous Gosh. ratio? Yeah, that, that Hoka one has been popular. The Mach Four has been very popular. I still like Nike. I'm yeah, just and Nike, Nike is like an easy. Everybody's position. chasing Nike for that. Yeah, yeah. This is the difference between the run shoe world and the bike world right now. I feel like there are a couple of bike companies that could lay claim to like we have the fastest road bike. Yeah. Really, anybody? Well, I mean, like I think everybody would. Anybody's being reasonable would agree Nike's the fastest shoe right now. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is weird because is. We, we've never ever in the past had like a shoe that was Nike faster before. than another shoe. How many pairs of shoes do you guys buy a year? I used to I, literally run my shoes for years. I I hated yeah. switching shoes. I would run for a very very long time in them. I thought the running shoes companies claim that you need to switch every four hundred yeah. miles is ridiculous. I would run one to death. And nowadays I switch pretty frequently. I got a tempo shoe. I got a track spike shoe. Yeah. I got an old track tempo shoe. I got a race shoe that I don't touch unless I'm racing. And then I got a training shoe and a trail shoe. Well, What's I don't think you should, the carbon shoes, those things, I don't think last that long. I, think I only, only race in those. Only racing. Only, yeah. period. Or maybe yeah. some speed work. I still don't even do my speed work in them. Okay. It's like a nice surprise on race day. I haven't bought a pair of shoes in over three years. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't run in them, there's like no reason to. Yeah, walk that's around it. the lab, and that's about it. So yeah, yeah. crazy. Same. Yep. Yeah. I haven't even bought road shoes in almost three years. I, I got cycling. Shoes I had to get badly. new road I shoes after. Yeah. Road shoes. yeah. I Mine ordered some from Giro. There's another one for the summer list. Uh, you it's need on my new list. shoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I ordered a pair of shoes from Giro like a month ago. Still not here. Oh, uh, is, is are that's a cycling shame. shoes also back? Uh, they said they have them in stock, but that's just how they roll. They're, uh, they're everything. S- Everything's in stock. We got everything. Just order. Yeah. Give us your money. <laughs> right. And exactly. then we'll ship it to you one, one of the years. We got it in stock. Oh, oh, did you mean in st- Oh, no, no. We, meant we will have it in stock. Yeah. You read that wrong. <laughs> it's on our compu- It's on our <laughs> website. Yeah. Exactly. We, we, just we might the, have it in We stock. finished the CAD designs for it. Yeah. Well, the picture's online. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I need to order some cycling shoes. Gotcha. We'll talk about that. It doesn't even have to be triathlon shoes. I don't even care. I need triathlon shoes. Yeah. All right. So another thing coming out this we summer. The bont shoes. Those bont shoes look nice. Lake They're just two. Okay. Lake Super expensive. Target. We're too yeah. close. <laughs> they are target. On target. <laughs> <laughs> Made it pretty far in the podcast without having to get that. That's good. <laughs> Shimano coming out with their 12-speed stuff this mm. summer. We right, should be yeah. getting an announcement, if I'm not mistaken, in. That's exciting. Late June, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. is when they're going to actually do the announcement. I've seen it specced on bikes that I know should be starting to arrive. If you did preseason orders as a dealer, you should start to see them arrive in September, October. Um, yeah. So th- that stuff's coming out. It's it's right around the corner, and they okay. haven't like told us any of the specs. We just know it's going to be on these bikes, and those embargoes are supposed to lift in late June, if I'm not mistaken, when Shimano actually right. announces everything. So it'll so. be at the tour. It will be. We would expect to see. Oh, yeah. Probably. We would expect to see all of this stuff at the tour. It's going to be a marketing blitz is I it, would expect is it yeah. electronic oh yeah yes. is it wireless wireless yeah wireless finally and something to do with the shifters yeah. not needing batteries that they like self charge somehow oh yeah i, 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 I don't know exactly how or whatever but i don't know would, would it be an unpopular opinion here to say that i might want to wait for gen 2 of that just since it's their that first foray seems possible into well that. it'll just yeah. be durace right so. yeah yeah so this will be their Gen 1 cool of their wireless stuff. Bad. Yeah, and You know that SRAM's going to be right around the corner with theirs. I mean, they've yeah. had their ETAP, Access ETAP out for over two years now. So they're yeah. probably in the works for it. It's wonderful. Yeah. This will be their the Gen Access. 4 coming out. So they've had three the iterations SRAM. already of their... Yeah. Sh- but the uh, thing yeah. is, is like interesting things I was going to say, happen. like, SRAM Force <clears throat> is... And I mean, Jake knows way better than me. I think it's behind the middle Shimano. You know, I mean, like it's it's behind. But Axis, at least from what I've experienced on my TT bike, is absolutely amazing. Yeah, like it, incredible. It, it, Force is uh is works just as good. It's just lighter and less expensive. Wait, what's, okay. what's lighter? The Force lighter over the Axis. Less. The right. um. The, oh no no no! Oh yeah. The shifting yeah. like the. I'm comparing the Shram, Shram to Shimano though. Yeah yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. No, you're right. Yeah. So yeah, because that's something SRAM came out with recently as well. Was they released the the force the rival? Yeah, rival. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, no, no, rival. rival. Yeah. That's what I meant mm-hmm. to say. Mm-hmm. Rival. Yeah. Force, yeah. It goes. Red, red force rival. Yes. Correct. And they did wireless rival. Yes. And it's cheaper. Cheaper. Top of the food chain. Less great. A little <laughs> heavier. Yep. So yeah. That, yeah. that's nice that they've got that down into a, a as a one by tier axis is amazing. So yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, anything else coming out that anybody knows of that is okay to talk about? Um, the wrong I'm one. Sure, there's something. 
I mean, there, there's always rumors of like the Garmin 955 that I don't mm-hmm. think is coming out anytime soon. Uh-huh. But they're they're. I think what's going to happen is the seven or sorry the 945 LTE, which I don't know if that's going to be exciting for anyone. But you know, triathlon watch with LTE options. So now is the premise behind that just to be able to leave your phone at home when you go for a run? Leave your phone at home. You know, there could be some tracking mm-hmm. stuff where your yeah. spouse could track you, and you could. I don't know. I doesn't seem like something that I would be like super pumped about, but someone will. Someone will be pumped about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think everybody's pretty acclimated to running with their phone. I mean. <coughs> Me Does too. it bother you to take your phone with you, Evan? I never do. Where do you no. put it? I don't. He doesn't. Oh, you don't take yeah. it with you. Gotcha. Well, and Josh no. was just talking about how he likes to have music on his watch. Josh will usually listen to music, yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. Because it's, I usually bring my phone. If I'm, and if I'm running outdoors, I won't. The only time I do like it is actually with track workouts. If someone brings a boom box, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that but is cool. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool if someone brings a boom box. Yeah. We should maybe do that on Monday mornings. Okay. Yeah. Any bike computers that we should talk about? There's uh I don't want to get into specifics, but I know that Wahoo's got yeah. something up their sleeves. That so would be stay cool to see later I this month. I would be excited to see that. Yep. Yep. I'm loving my Wahoo computer now, but I'll probably say that ten years from now and be like, Oh, I think it's time to yeah. update now. Matt came in <laughs> talking about how hard Wahoo element roams are or not roams, but uh, bolts, bolts are hard are to f- get right now. Yeah, they're and yep. people are like jacking the price up to three hundred bucks. I saw <laughs> I saw a price for three hundred dollars, which does not make sense. Which right now, <laughs> utterly <laughs> ridiculous, <laughs> given the fact that they Used, retail yeah. the MSRP on those is two hundred thirty bucks. So people are really marking them up to three hundred dollars. The okay. other one that's, you know, okay, so that's the bolt is very long in the tooth. We would say it's four years since they've updated that computer. Yeah. Uh, the other one is supposedly the you know uh, Garmin ten thirty plus is like they say that's overdue. Yep. I've heard people talk about that, so they would potentially do like a ten forty. Yeah. Lance, have you ever had that computer like the ten thirty? Yes. Yeah. It seems yep. like you. Uh, it's, you've had it, something like that. It's a. I, it got passed down to Brandy. That's the computer Brandy uses. Was now. it the ten thirty or the ten thirty plus? The ten thirty. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not the plus. Okay. I that think was like that everybody's triathlon computer for a long time. It was just it's just so big. It's yeah. a big computer. And I, Brandy's eyes aren't real good, so, right. and you so can she can she really can make large. it big. So well, you this can is see this is why I love Wahoo is because for me being yeah. a blind person is yeah. it's yeah. wonderful. I mean right. it's great because it, it really, really pops good. up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Garmin the, I cannot see. I can't <laughs> see it. <laughs> yeah. I have the ten thirty plus to review and I'm gonna put a video about that at some point and we'll give that one away. But it's great having that super large screen. And you got bigger battery life yeah. and things like that. So I don't even know what they would do with the 1040. Like, what would you do? Like, what would? But it would make sense for them to update that one first with whatever the latest greatest technology and is, down. and yep. then trickle down yep. eventually. Which is right. why I think that you know the Phoenix should come before the 955, which hasn't happened in the past, but that's what should happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yep, I think you're right. We'll Interesting. It, it, it's been for the 530, two years since that one came out because I got it when it first came out, which was okay. in May of right. 20. Which just came out 19. the same time as the Rome. Yeah. Basically the same week. So the product cycles, you and I were having a discussion about yeah. this that they're going to start moving towards a, an annual product cycle update kind of thing. I think that that was the rumor a while back, but clearly they can't do an annual release. I mean, I don't think Garmin can, and I don't think Wahoo can, but there's pressure from Apple. Like you still wear it. Lance, you wear an Apple watch. I do. Every year there will be a new one. Yes. It's like the next, there's going to, the next one's going to be the series seven. Like it's yep. coming out right. and it'll be great. Uh, and so you can c- almost count on it like a yearly cycle. And I think Garmin is going to start to feel the pressure. And I think that they're going to move from a two or three year cycle to a, maybe a one and a half. Let's talk about the pros and cons of, tightening that that up tightening that up like as a consumer do you feel a little like oh why am i going to go spend all this money when something new is going to come out and just like you know if you're buying it now and they're going to come out with something in september in a half year are you going to buy it now or are you going to wait see my my thing is is tricky well i mean i'm I'm a bad example but i no, i do think a lot of more people than we realize probably do it my approach which is you use the thing till it's completely dead dead Dead. and is completely non-functional anymore and you can't do maybe that's every five six years yeah whatever's new right then that's I'll just what buy. You pick, yeah. I just pick yeah, that, and so then I'm bad. like, all right, I know I got six years out of this thing before it's completely obsolete. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. And then I'm also thinking about it from a dealer's perspective. Like that's a pain in the butt because you've got yeah. to move all of your product. You and don't want to get people stuck. aren't replacing it yeah. every year. I yeah. mean, if you yeah. look at the grand percentage, maybe what five percent of cyclists yeah. are replacing their bike computers every single yeah. year. No. Yeah, right. triathletes. I know. Uh, how many triathletes you see that are like? What 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 garment do you have? I don't, I don't even remember. I yeah. got this thing like seven eight years ago. I bought it used. Yeah. Like that's most triathletes, to be There's honest. Some, and, yeah. the, and the ones when whenever someone says like I'm still rocking the, 
you know, the big one. Yeah. What is that one called? I don't remember which that I one. know. I know but what you're talking like, about. Um, it's like, whatever. It's like the 305. That's yeah. not the right number. But like yeah. the big one. And it's like, I'm like, good. You are getting so much value out of this yeah. watch. And yeah. they're watching my videos about all the new watches. You save so much money. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, hang on. Just yeah. hang on to get, keep getting good value. Wait for out the of 955 that. and then you can but save the 955 forever. I think my hang up on a faster cycle is that software wise, they need to you can't just neglect a watch because it's a year and a half old. Yeah. You got to keep updating. And I think Wahoo has done a great job for four years, updating the bolt every month. Yeah. They're getting software updates and things like that. Still after four years, I think that, you know, you, you can't move your cycle tighter and not, you know, completely just, and I, I I'm going to throw polar under the bus. Polar company is great. They make great watches. They make great heart rate monitors, but like, Six months after the watch, after, you know, one of their watches was released, they kind of just stopped updating it with all of the new features that some of the other watches got. Like, that's too tight. You need to be able to get updated software to your older devices long term, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, I yeah, don't so. disagree. I'd love to see them have less or a, a wider product cycle and just more right. frequent updates. And then just make sure that what you're making has the capacity to be updated firmware that can come out and make it do the latest and greatest things. Yeah. And then once that becomes an issue where the computer's unable to do that or something earth shaking mm -hmm. changes right. in the industry and they're able to connect to some new satellite or it does right. some yep. crazy new like metric that, that others don't 5G do. 5G is yeah. like one of those things. I yeah. mean, here's the thing. Would you want the same thing for phone companies? Like, okay, Apple's not going to announce the next phone because there's nothing big coming down the pipeline. Or would you just say, you know what, they should stick to their yearly cycle. They do a good job with their software. They're backwards compatible for the most part yeah. for a ways. So. Yeah, for a ways. I... I think that there would be more pomp and circumstance around that. You just like, oh, it's just a new phone, not a big deal. I'm not up for a new phone, so I don't really care about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. and yeah. If they did something maybe every two to three years. What's as everybody's ice, uh, iPhone replacement cycle so far? How many how many generations are you replacing at? I do, do you have go, an iPhone? Or do you, I do have an that's iPhone. I, I usually okay, yeah. go, I've, I was on the two-year plan. The last yeah. phone I had, not, not the one that I have right now, but the one before that, we went three years. Gotcha. Just my phone was working fine. It's like six, eight, yeah. 10, 12 kind of. Something like that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. This one that I have right now, which is the 11, I will replace it gotcha. when the new one comes out this year. And yeah, this right. is a super cycle, as they're saying that there's supposed to be more people than ever updating their oh. phones because of, you know, just the the cycle turnover yeah. and when new phones come out and the 5G and a couple other things. They're just saying yeah. that this is going to be a. Pretty I I was every year right when it came out because it was like part of my job. Yeah, yeah, yeah For you, that's the, a different story. This is yeah. the first year where I've. This is going to be a two year cycle for me. Really, mm -hmm. which okay. is. I'm like, you know what? I can live without the 12. Gotcha. And that's, that's, that's too fun. I, I went from the six to the 12 and everybody I yeah, talked to is like, yeah, week. yeah, I'm skipping. I'm skipping the 12. I was like, cool. The one, the one that I was like, <laughs> all right, time to update. Everybody's like, yeah, that's good. I'll wait for the 13. I don't, I don't think it matters when you, <laughs> No, I just think, yeah, when. For me, it does not. I'm not, I am not even close to utilizing the phone to its full capacity. So whatever well, I need to, as soon as my phone dies, which hopefully be every six cycles, I'll just replace it then. Yeah. Have a good phone though, because that's a good uh, little bike computer as well. Right? Yeah, that's true. There you there go. Go. Yeah, I right. actually had someone ask me this in one of my videos. Like, I was talking about. I think maybe it was the Wahoo Element Bolt mm -hmm. or something. They were like, "Why would you use this over a phone?" And I was like, <laughs> "Great question." I I went through and I kind of you know talked about. You some don't want to break it. I mean, that's and, yeah, yeah. And I was, but that's all. I think it's a very reasonable question it is does mm -hmm. your phone connect to your power meter where you can display Hers, everything up, up she I'm, was she had a um wahoo i think it was wahoo she had the speed cadence sensor and uh, that was going to her phone and sure. so she was getting you know speed and the cadence wahoo details app. from mm -hmm. her wahoo app that she was using gotcha and yeah i think can i mentioned get map, well, power and stuff but off of it yeah. yeah, I mean, you can do everything. It's just going to be all over the place. It's not going to be centralized yeah. on one computer, and then you have to have a mount for your bike or your phone. Right. My, your my main thing would be, I mean, your typical cyclist in a year is going to crash at least once. Yeah, I mean, for sure, that that's just you know, it's a matter of time. So you're going to crash once. I really, yeah, no knocking on wood, but I mean, I would really rather have my bike computer. I, that that phone, just the way it mounts, the way right. it, like if that it's thing hits there. the ground at an angle, that yeah. your your phone's it's toast. Yeah. yeah, that's not making it. You know, it, my computer works with my radar. It works with my power meter. Yeah. It works with my heart. And it's all right there. Hey, the new radar works with yeah. your phone as well. It does, but it the doesn't. 515. You, you can only use it with ride G, with GPS, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So you can't be chasing a Strava segment. I mean, oh, right. yeah. if I'm, I use Strava, it's just, you know. All of us yeah. are bike computer people. Yeah. Like, yeah. I even, you know, I, I the next question you get is like, well, I have all of that stuff on my watch. And I'm like, yes, 
all of us still have watches bike. and bike computers yeah. because yeah. it's just so nice to have a dedicated device yep. that does specific bike stuff. Simplicity. Yep. yep. Yeah. Anything else coming out that you guys want to let the world know about? Uh, some back. goggles that I swam with today. I think so. They're mm -hmm. um, they're an early preview. This is from a company called Finis, and they make a ton of really good swimming stuff paddles and things like that just a lot of swim gear but they actually have a new goggle that's being released today or tomorrow some sometime soon where it's um you can pre-order right now or when this podcast comes out i'm guessing that it should be available they are extremely expensive but they're smart goggles so you're seeing data in the corner of your eye where you can huh. kind of see like the if you're lap swimming, you can see the distance that you're swimming the amount of laps and the splits or times that you can you know um, get it's from each flip neat. turn. It's mm -hmm. cool. It's interesting, but it's extremely expensive. I think two hundred and forty dollars or something like that. And that's uh, the nice part about it is it's a bit modular. You can take the computer piece out, and then you have the goggles. And if you lose the goggles or the goggles need to be replaced, which sometimes happens because it gets scratched or the anti fog wears out, they're only thirty five dollars to replace the goggles, which I think is reasonable. Would you want something like that on your cycling glasses? Yes. I know that Garmin had their little. They did. Sight thing, whatever. And I never they, tested yeah. it or I never even yeah, played they, with it. It was already discontinued. Andrew, Andrew Starkowitz was using that for a while, yeah. actually. He yeah. was. Yeah. Um, Triathlete. Yeah. I. Okay. So there's always been rumors that Apple was going to do some, some glasses, That's, right? Yeah. So, and then Google did their glass hole. People call it <laughs> glass hole <laughs> or whatever because didn't they had really their. Take on. Yeah. yeah. It didn't really, it didn't really pick up. But like the concept is going to come down the pipeline. I mean, I'm glad we were being recorded. So. In five years, people will go back and watch this podcast and be like, Matt said this is going to be a thing, and it's not. Matt called the future. But, <laughs> but I, I Or if it is, to, they'll give you complete credit. <laughs> I have to imagine that smart glasses are going to be a thing in the future. Yep. And, Do you uh, think people are just going to be walking around with these? Like, I mean, yeah. just sunglasses. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Well, I mean, like, oh, what if you God. were able to wear your glasses, but... You were able to get those critical notifications. <laughs> right I don't in, even have my head. watch linked up to that because uh, when I check my phone is when I'll check things. I don't want to know when somebody's sending me a text message. This is why my phone's always on silent mode too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, how long did you hold out before you got a smartphone? A long time. Yeah. Very I'm guessing the same thing for glasses. It was only for four you. years ago I got a smartphone. Yeah. So, so yeah. you'll hold out for a long time four and then eventually you'll cave, but you'll eventually have smart glasses and it'll be great. I'm thinking too that Matt and I were talking about this. The Garmin Varia radar eventually is going to have a camera in it. It just yeah. it has to. It makes oh, all the sense smart. in the world that's smart. to have oh, a yeah, camera in there so you that. can pick that up. Could you yep. imagine if it broadcasted that signal up to your glasses and you can have like a rear view mirror like down the corner? It's you too can confusing. See the There's too many all things. All you have to do is look down. You can see like in a rear view mirror. Dude, my depth perception is yeah, so bad. If there's something that different than driving your here. car around <laughs> in the rear view mirror. They, they, do, they did invent this thing called a mirror a while back <laughs> and you can wear them on the side of your glasses. Oh, but that makes you a Fred instantly. So that's... I'm joking. Mirrors are very safe. They're People, great. if you if you like mirrors, mirrors you should great. wear them. You yeah. should have a mirror. But I will make fun of you. <laughs> but you should also have the Varia radar. You can also make fun of me for wearing short socks. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> funny. All right. I don't think there's anything else new coming out unless Lance has something that he's got up his sleeve. Uh, this is all rumor from SRAM. So. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. SRAM? Or yeah. SRAM have some rumors? 13 there's some, speed. <laughs> there's some interesting <laughs> stuff that SRAM, I think, can do because of this whole wireless piece. Yeah. Have you looked into this? That's, I think it's, That's what I'm looking at. Um. They, okay. They have a they have a concept that there's some it, very SRAM's, interesting stuff. SRAM, SRAM's wireless um, shifters right now. There's yeah. a paddle that sits right next to your brake lever, and they might do away with the paddle so that you just click your brake lever and it shifts the gears, and oh, you cool. pull on it to grab the brakes. So and that there, could be interesting. There was they were Takes talking about how away. there was yeah. like. Um, I can't remember how all of this comes together, but they were talking like, oh, well, wireless dropper posts and like all, there's a whole bunch of things mm -hmm. that could connect into one ecosystem with the access stuff. And it was, there was something else that was pedal based. And I was yeah. like, we have the access dropper post. We have, yeah, there's wireless already wireless okay. yeah. access dropper but posts. Yeah. There was something about like looking, I can't remember how this goes. And I, I'll, we can always figure this out, but like they were going to have it like, um, you could get some dynamics of how like rough terrain was from the pedals. And then, so it's like you could figure out like when things needed to be done automatically. I mean, there was some really crazy concepts that could were you, out there. Could you imagine if they hook up to like a heart rate and your cadence and like 
power and that came up with your shifting profile to keep you like as efficient as possible no <laughs> i mean it's i it's mean actually i don't possible. think it's i don't think that that's gonna be <laughs> that times, crazy. it's actually possible there are times you, i'm riding and like i catch like a group of people that look like they ride very recreationally and they're on some hill and they're in their hardest gear <laughs> 30 cadence you know like, what you want to tell them that like, what are you doing you're like dude i can make this in. so much you're easier like, on you i just, just want to go by like shift just shift up like just three shift, gears i'll shift for you yeah yeah. <laughs> I can make this ride so much more enjoyable for you <laughs> right now. Uh, so there was, I think there are people that have done this where, so um, I think Shimano has their, is it D-Fly or something? I can't remember. Uh, the What's the, what's Shimano's oh, wireless Yeah, system? the little wireless transmitter Bluetooth. I feel thing. like people yeah. have hacked it to where it's like a, basically a, a continuous shifting piece where based on, you could, you could set something up where it's like at this cadence shift and it's all automated. Uh, I don't the remember. Shift? I wouldn't like the that at all, but shift, it'd be really yeah. cool. I mean, that, that would be very cool, but I would hate it. I, I think that's the thing. It's like it's interesting concepts, but people don't love no. their bike shifting for them. No. 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 It's neither. like I, I, I would never jump into manual. a car that drives itself. I would never jump into a bike that shifts itself. Captain Luddite over here. Yep. Yes. <laughs> when I'm 60, I'll probably just be walking everywhere at that point because <laughs> I'll be terrified <laughs> of all things. So. <laughs> all right. Let's, let's, let's change gears. Let's jump into the stuff that we will be picking up this summer, at least that's on our list of things that we want to get. Sunscreen. That's going to get his <laughs> new sunscreen. He's going to buy it for sure. Swedish fish. Captain no, Safety <laughs> over here. Or Safety Safety Dan. Is that safety what? Dan. That's right. I actually do need a new road helmet. That will be my, my purchase and new triathlon shoes. Cycling yep. shoes. I need both of those. Gotcha. Gotcha. What else? And uh, whenever speed play comes out. Oh, yeah. That's with on your list. Power meter pedal. I will be getting that. That's about it. And you're going to get a new watch? I think this summer. Um, you can come steal one from my office. Yeah. You should come get something. Yeah, yeah. I need Try to Try a whole something. bunch of stuff and see what you like. The 45. How many watches cool. got stacked up over there? Probably a dozen or so. Okay. Wow. Yeah, we need to hang out this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring the skateboard over. Lance, you're always buying new stuff. What are you getting? Um, I am prone to overheating, so oh. I'm looking at like those cooling arm warmers. I just got oh, a, yeah. a base layer from Castelli that is a cooling base layer. What do you think? Um, I've I've worn it once and it certainly it felt good. good. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm curious as to if those cooling arm warmers would help as well because I tend to overheat. Is easy. that cheating in the Peloton? Cooling arm warmers? Cooling, cooling base, base layers? layers in the Peloton. Why would that be cheating? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're know. on uh, thinking. Ineos and you've got ones with the little dimples yeah. in it, you know, that's what they're racing. I there's, know, you right? You can't yeah. have them in a jersey, but there's no rule that says you can't have, have it in, in the, the under base layer. just make a really, really tight and that's what they're doing. jersey. Yeah. just unzip your jersey. <laughs> Take the jersey off and <laughs> <Yeah>. just go. <laughs> <laughs> I see Vegan Cyclist was, did this little mini training camp this last week, and yeah. one of the guys he rides with, it was super hot. He took his jersey off entirely and like tucked it in his Not a bad idea. And got a terrible burn. Sunburn. Sunburn. Oh. That, that needs to be normalized. <laughs> Taking off a cycling jersey when it's 98 <laughs> and hot as heck. Yeah. yeah. That and he's riding around with his bibs up over his shoulder. Have you seen his Impossible Route video yet? <laughs> I haven't. I you need, need to, to watch, watch it. it. It's, it's yeah. worth it. That guy puts a lot of good effort into his videos. He's yeah. a cool guy. That's funny. Yeah. I'm going to get a new shoulder this summer. Are you? Uh, I've got I heard one they're on, order, on sale. But they're back ordered. Uh. <laughs> oh, I thought we were really talking about another attempt. I was like, oh, what are we doing? <laughs> no, no more surgeries, man. I'm sick of that. I was going to say, please not get the total shoulder. Uh, no, I'm going to put Chris Kors in my mountain bike. Are I've you? got yeah. it in my gravel bike, and I like it. I'm yeah. going to put it in the mountain bike because I have been slowly but surely building up a little bit of strength and a little bit of stamina to where my shoulder can actually ride the mountain bike more yeah. than once every three months. So uh, yeah. I think it's time to put the Kush cores in there just to kind of play with it's the tire pressure idea. a little bit more and, and grip a little bit better. And I finally got to play with the dropper post on the mountain bike this past week or two. Oh, my Lord. Mm -hmm. That is Bastard. highly, highly worth the investment. Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, I got my first one, and it was on my first mountain bike that I had with well my fir the first mountain bike that I had that had one on there was just after I had my shoulder melees and mm -hmm. I really just never was able to ride the bike and therefore I wasn't ever really able to test it out and my shoulder still sucks yeah. insert explicatives here um, but I was able to kind of like start to play with it a little bit more and it actually takes a lot of the pressure off my shoulder but oh my mm -hmm. gosh it's so much faster yeah. it's so much easier to go flying through stuff and get that center of gravity low and the bike just handles a lot better in the race on Saturday, yeah. I, I probably put my dropper post up and down fifty times yeah. wow. at least. That's yeah, a lot. it's 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 all. I'm always shifting it. If if there's tight corners coming up, yeah, I, you can change it. Yeah, I just put it down and you go off yeah. the back. Anything I'm, steep. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna add one to my TT bike. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I wish 
I, I went and looked at the SRAM Axis one, and it's the, was it 33 or 31.8, I think it is, millimeter diameter, and we need the 27.2 for the oh. gravel bike, so it's not going to work for the uh, the wireless one. For the wireless one. I thought that that would be so slick just to push a button and it's down, but I'm still considering putting one on the gravel bike just for grins and giggles because there are some situations for my shoulder yeah. that I want to get down a little bit lower, and I'm not leading as far forward if you're on something that's kind of steep de descending. Yeah. Being able to get down and get the weight over your hips and, and just not so much uh, over your hands mm -hmm. makes a big, excuse me, big difference. Sure. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So that's me. What, what else you got coming up? Uh, I think I need some potentially new tires to go tubeless. So yeah, we were talking about that. That'll be fun. Weekend. Yep. That'll mm -hmm. be, I'm excited about that. So that'll be a purchase this summer. I have, I'm sure I'm going to get a, you know, a whole bunch of stuff, maybe new, whatever new bike computer comes out, snag one of those. Yes, sir. Got to test it, test all mm -hmm. the things. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. I don't feel like I need anything. I think new shoes would, you know, new shoes, yeah. my shoes are gross. So my are awful. Yeah. I have some, my clips shoes. are destroyed is what I need to replace. Honestly. My helmet is right at three years old. Evan it's brought up a good one. That's on the list that everybody should be looking at. Too, is your cleats. Your cleats. Yeah. I agree. That I was thinking about that. Cause oh, and how often those get stripped is just. My, yeah, my left one, I, I tried everything to get it off. I can't get it off right now. And, oh, really? Yeah. Check no, pedal terrible. tension, too, while you're at it. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I pulled my foot straight out of my pedal on the yeah. flogging ride one week. It was like the second weekend, and he almost went down. Band. Thankfully, Lance has got some bike down. handling skills, and he Whoa. saved it. But good Lord, scared the snot out of all of us. I was I sprinting past everyone, all of a sudden, pa -ching! I pulled my foot right out of my cleat <laughs> yeah. because the tension was just too loose. Mm. That was why it popped yeah, out. Float. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What else, Evan? You getting anything else? Nah, that's pretty much it for You're me. Good. Lance? Yeah, shoes are good. I buy stuff every week. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Walks in the lab, he's like, Picky well, bars. What do I need? Days. I need picky bars. <laughs> I wouldn't mind buying some picky bars. I actually. love picky bars. Yeah. Just good. Yeah. Um, I Can think any that camera stuff? You going to buy anything new? <sighs> I'm trying not to. That's smart. <laughs> well, I want the Sony a7 IV if that ever comes out. Yeah, that'll so be probably not this I summer. Well, who knows? I was on the fence. I was looking at the A1. I was like, oh, oh my gosh. So nice. That's a nice camera. It's a six thousand dollar camera, <laughs> oh, though. Geez. Yeah. Now I've got friends. Hey, we spend that much on bicycles. <laughs> got friends you, in different places. If that you could get probably a, any sort of sale on that thing, then you could turn around and sell it for the sure. Thing, you know, more. Yeah. You make and money. It does such a good job of holding its value, but I think, yeah. I think I'm going to pass on that because I just can't yep. justify. You know, even if I were just to get it for a thousand bucks less, I could probably buy two A7 fours when those come out for that amount of money. The A7 four will be nice. Yeah. I'm sure. So. Yep. That's what I got up my sleeve. And then I'm um, probably going to get a few things from Insta360 because we're oh, working yeah. with them folks now. Pretty excited, cool. excited about that. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I finally got my bike set up with the mount and stuff I with the Insta360. <laughs> I laughed a little bit earlier, like a couple minutes ago. Matt came over to my house to pick something up that he had uh, yeah, he left at A the, light box. Yeah, yeah. And I was joking with Lance about this. He's starting to look like DC Rainmaker. Oh, when DC goes like out on a ride. When, when Ray goes out on a ride, he's got <laughs> stuff got all over his bike, strapped all like, so much. Yeah. testing all the things. He's getting all the metrics and all the data. It's like so. six different watches on there. Too. I, <laughs> could, I could have added more, too, because I've got you really so should. many bike computers that are... You know, I, that's my, I'm in the thick of it. If I had more time, that's probably what more, like m some of those videos would ever see the day of light, but it's, it's by, cons by computer central and it's, <laughs> I've got probably four or five videos, all of this stuff. I'm giving a lot of it away too. Yeah. And so I just got to get those out. Cool. <laughs> I need time. I need more time in the day. There you go. Um, before we call this one done and wrapped, um, Austin Elling asked oh. on the, uh, the live chat, how often you should replace your shoes or how often would you guys replace your what shoes? What are you talking about, running shoes or cycle? Well, cycling shoes. shoes. Running shoes, we already pee, answered. You pee that's in your yeah. cycling shoes? <laughs> then replace them immediately. Immediately. <laughs> just throw them in the trash. They they got, leave them in transition. Yeah. <laughs> if you got holes. Give them to a friend. Just throw them. <laughs> if you got holes, if you've got cracks in the carbon fiber sole. Yeah. I got all that. Or if they just stink so bad and there's just no that. bring I think back. if you, my, my thing is once I start to feel the pedal, I know that sounds weird, but if you, you guys ever realize that when your shoes really start to wear, down the cycling shoes i started to be able to feel the speed play pedal a lot more uh -oh. i'm not sure if it's just a speed play problem <laughs> that's your but carbon like, fiber soul yeah giving exactly. up. and that's yeah. and that's why i started to realize i'm getting a little bit of flex i can feel the pedal i'm like all right it's time to yeah. I feel for like me though carbon fiber lasts pretty i mean it's except for it starts to crack my Matt, i put huge watts through my shoes that's true. okay <laughs> that's yeah. true my last two pairs <laughs> me of and shoes. lance over here are dropping 1800 watt bombs okay bombs. <laughs> my last two pairs of shoes are i cracked and broke the carbon fiber on both See, of them I do not inside of three years so really Okay. It was kind of crappy. I just don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on shoes. They're expensive. They're so, yeah. And the ones I'm looking at, because like, I'm bucks. not going to buy a cheap 
triathlon yeah. shoe. Unfortunately, I'm just like I need to get something that's nice and cool. Bond, is that what you like? Bond. Uh, I'm either looking at Lake or Specialized. Okay. The uh, Trivent, either the Trivent or Lake's shoe. We've got to deal with Lake too. I've just never Do done we? anything with them. Yet. Okay. We might I have might. to talk about that. And yeah. Carlos was telling me that we need to look into Bont. Bont is nice. Yeah. They're so they're like four hundred dollars is like the starting point. Or really something crazy. I don't wow. remember, but they're they're nice, and mm -hmm. I definitely kind of want one for like triathlon racing. It's one of the shoes mm -hmm. where I don't know if I'd wear it all the time because then you know you're messing up your super yeah. pricey shoes, kind of yeah. like your Nike race <laughs> shoes. But yeah. But yeah, I also have. I'm had probably gonna train in my old pair of shoes on the trainer still, and then just yeah, only ride out so. outside. I've had good luck with yeah. getting like discontinued shoes that are a year or two old, yeah. and then you know, like because cool. you can get them for 100 under a hundred bucks or yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's call that done. But real quick, okay. before we say done, done, mm -hmm. real quick, you get to say one thing. What's one thing that you need for racing this summer? Anything? New Achilles. New Achilles. Gotcha. Better swim splits. Gotcha, Lance. <laughs> Not to crash. <laughs> <laughs> and a new shoulder. Yes. There you go. We'll, just, we'll just keep this all non product related. <laughs> non product related. <laughs> cool. Let's jump into one last thing. Um, Lance, go first. Um, hopefully, I'm doing a road race uh, the f for the first time in That's like exciting. a year and a half uh, wow. this weekend, mm -hmm. hopefully. So we'll see how that rolls. Nice. Good luck, dude. Thanks. Hope, make sure you call that promoter. I'm going to call him. I want to race with my teammates, not by myself. Or dialed, dialed, dialed could win both races. Yeah. Never know. Tom will talk about him on the podcast. Promote his, his next race if he yeah. gets, uh, gets me in there. There you go. <laughs> Evan, what you got? Um, we got coming up. There was a little switch in the local triathlon schedule. Yeah. Um, on Ju the weekend of June 4th, 5th, instead of a race at Hag Lake, the race has been – Hag Lake has been bumped to July, and the PDX triathlon – has been moved from Blue Lake to Vancouver Lake. The water tastes oh, great. We know that. The state and borders, huh? For June 4th, 5th. So it's going to be the same weekend. There will still be a race. And honestly, for me, I'm kind of like selfishly pretty happy about that because Vancouver Lake is like literally a four-minute drive race? from my house. Are you going to race it? Or yeah. You, okay. yeah, I'm going to race it, it. It will be two weeks before Des Moines, so I will be there racing. Jake, odds of you being there? I'll be at all of them. Be at all of them. I'll that's, be wrenching that's what I and thought. taking pictures. Awesome. Really? Yeah. And oh, then I, I will be there like before yeah, and sure. after the race doing – PT talk stuff. If anybody wants to oh, come really? up me and tell me what hurts, then yeah. we will talk. Yeah. We'll set up if I'm, if I'm some a little, pain. Yeah, if I'm, I'm a little. Playing, I would like to do some videography stuff there. Come on as out. Well, yeah. 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 So I'll have so a have home a base weekend. set up, bunch of tents, yeah. the whole shoot match, the That's van. It's a very fun weekend. weekend for us. Fourth June, fourth and fifth. Yep. Uh, June fourth, fifth. I've got, I've got family, family, family. Something. Somebody was talking about something going on June fifth, and I said, "Oh, that's the Oregon Grand Fondo." I think the fourth is a Friday. It's Mike Ripley's big. There's something else even on top of that, if I'm not mistaken. That's the three year anniversary of me getting hit by car. I have talked about that too many times. Be a big weekend. Damn it. That'll be a big weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, cool. Yes, yeah, so, so celebrated by riding a bicycle at Vancouver Lake, yeah. which could not so, be any safer, flatter well, area to ride a just bike. Strategic stuff because like you I throw, think it's throw a stone across the Oregon border and they won't let you do racing. I, I think that that's yep. and, and I think yeah. Blue Lake has actually been getting tougher to run that race there. Now I could be completely wrong, Carissa. It's and, a nice part, but I think that the people who live at Blue Lake really don't like the um, race, uh, the race happening there. So I think for a while that that has been tougher also to run there. Questionable so. water quality, depending on the time yeah, of the blue, year. Blue Lake is a coin toss on if that water is going to be okay. It's or not, not so how always many, blue, the blue lake. <laughs> yeah, it's not. How many triathlons green. are they going to have out at Vancouver Lake this year? All of them. <laughs> that's, that's why I was joking. I was like, Vancouver Lake is going to have every local triathlon now. <laughs> Them and Super. Horseshoe. Yeah. I, great for me. That's four minutes from my house. If if Y runs every race there, I'll be at every single one. So yeah. Lackamas Lake wasn't so dirty. You guys could maybe go over there. Maybe. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Wouldn't be bad. That'd be amazing. Cause It'd be a great race. You could do a trail run along the side. Oh, yeah. oh man, that'd be amazing. Run but heritage. It's just, yeah. There's not a big enough parking lot. That's yeah. true. At Lackamas. That is true. Well, and you if you're biking, it's not great from there. No, as much as I wish area. it was, it's yeah. just kind of like traffic-y. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Send people around a roundabout. Yeah, go around the roundabout a couple times. <laughs> 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 Matt LeGrand, one last thing. Well, always videos. There's that going. So I just did the Wahoo Element Bolt after a year. Not a lot of people are watching that one. Don't know why. <laughs> How many views does it have? Because I, I already know. bought it because you it, told me to. I'm, I don't know. Maybe it might have, I'm, I could guess 500, but I no, actually. Oh, it's got to be know. more than that. It's not, it's not a very good. 677. 677. So there you go. Jammy on the spot. Um, What's your biggest video lately? Uh, you know, every once in a while, some random video will do really well. 
Uh, the Coros Pace 2, I'm sure, is doing well. I did that one like two weeks ago. Almost mm-hmm. 2,000 views. 2,000, okay. Um, there's another one that was totally random, and it was like top 10 videos that you should check out from triathlon, like top 10 triathlon videos that you should check out. That one was like, I thought that was going to be like a, you know, mediocre video. Filler and like video, almost a whole bunch of people watched that one. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. Your your best, best, didn't expect that one. Your best try watch, that's almost 10,000 views. Ten, is it the 945? Watch? Oh, that one. Yeah, I did that one. That was a fun one because it's like, the falling watches or something at the intro. Yeah. That Doesn't cool the video. 945 have something like 100,000 views? Probably. Yeah, that one was your, your big one, That's if mine. I'm not mistaken. Well, yeah, that one, another Wahoo Bolt one did really well. Really? Randomly. Huh. Which, that's why I thought the other one would do well. So um, so I've got that video that people should definitely check out. And then this week, I mentioned those smart goggles. I'm going to try to get that video out soon. Uh, and then I'm going to give those goggles away to whoever, you yep. know, is on the video comments and things like that. And then I have a whole bunch of bike computers that I'd like to review. And so those videos will come up soon as well as a polar watch video coming out at some point as well. So a whole bunch of stuff to get out there. I just got to have time, find some time to do it. (laughs) (laughs) It's hard. Yeah. I've been uh, threatening and talking about this for probably what, four weeks now about our uh, Garmin V Wahoo video coming out. I I worked on it again this weekend and, and, like uh, Adobe Premiere does it. It crashed and uh, killed about 45 minutes of my work. So. Dang it. <laughs> so that was the uh, final nail in that coffin. I'm not going to finish that video on that platform. You're going to switch I mid-platform. switched. I already oh. exported out all the, wow. the data that I need. I'm going over to uh, Final Cut Pro. I think that's a good choice. I think it's going to be a lot faster. Au revoir, Premiere, you bastard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that that's something that I've been working on for far too long. But um, yeah, stay tuned, hopefully. Stay tuned. It'll um, probably be out by the time this podcast comes out on Wednesday. No. No? Okay. <laughs> I, I just don't have it's time. It's not realistic. But yeah. there are some sunny skies on the horizon of, of help down here at the lab. And I'll, get into, we'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. there's also sunny skies for biking. That too. Yes, there which is. Which is dangerous because that means less work is going to get done. <laughs> also true. Yeah. I'm, I don't know which how I'm going to get any work done. Yeah. <laughs> My one last thing is I just wanted to give a shout out to David Root for putting on an awesome ride oh, slash yeah. race pace uh, deal out at Hag Lake. They oh, did the yeah. Hag Lake yeah. World Champions. And mm-hmm. he's been busting his backside uh us here at the the Dowd cycling lab we supported him a little bit with a bit of swag for some uh prizes if you will yeah. and then um we had a bunch of teammates that went out there and they had a really good sized group i mean he dished out more prizes for that race than any road race i ever did in midwest <laughs> <Yeah>. ever <laughs> there was there was roughly 30 people there i think or more it, it, yeah about something that, like that it, between probably 30 and 40 people it was a good showing so and, and david's filming uh on a gopro yeah. um on his uh e-bike on yeah. his unrestricted e-bike yeah. so he really? can stay with the leaders and drop back and then yeah. catch back that's it's, cool he's doing a great job it's such a cool idea so yeah. it's such yeah. a cool idea i didn't realize yeah i thought he was just filming stuff on his bike no he was he's on his unrestricted e-bike yeah yeah yeah, yeah there was like 250 bucks that was yeah, pulled was up for the winners money. of like the kom yeah. and each lap had a yeah. prem on it and there was like 60 bucks for the final and we gave him a bunch of product and stuff like that to add to it and it was just really well done and he put out a video this morning you can go who, to who ended up winning by the way greg Steele. greg Steele. greg Steele won really won the overall wow. yeah how's been where where was robert um, he was not in. There was three who won. There was three battling it out at the end, and Robert was not in those three. But he, but Did they, they were they, they were, were they were right there, right? Yeah, yeah. because because I was looking at the KOMs of each like little thing, and Robert was right there. Yeah, yeah. He didn't. No, Robert didn't yeah. take any of the KOMs and didn't take any of the preems and no. didn't take the. W- but that makes me wonder. Like <laughs> Robert also is in the middle of like an intense. Probably rode like eighty miles the day before. Yeah, I was like, oh right. cool, I'll ride to the race and back. <laughs> and yeah, I saw for Walla Walla. I, saw, Walla, I yeah. think I yeah. saw them on a video too. My money's on Robert with Walla Walla. That David put out the duffel bag on the front of their their bike. <laughs> just like doesn't care. Just out there riding, yeah. you know, doing doing their thing. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. But you can go check that out. Lance, you have it up right now. Where can people go see that video? It's called Roots Gone. R O O T S G O N E. Roots that's his, Gone. That's YouTube his channel. YouTube channel. channel. And then okay. the, the title is Hag Lake Worlds. Mm-hmm. Hag Lake five. with two G's. Yeah. H A G G. Go check that out. Good job, David. Way to keep uh, road cycling relevant and interesting here in the Pacific Northwest because there's not a lot else going on in our neck of the woods. Lance has got a race going on up in Washington this yep. coming week, but here in the, the greater Portland area. Let's go to Washington. Did you do a one last thing, Lance? I don't have anything. He's racing. I'm That's racing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe. Next time, come prepared. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it, guys. Anything else? That's it. No? Mm-hmm. Cool. 
thank you all for watching and listening and all that other fun stuff. If you have any questions, go to uh, Dow Podcast and you can see little places where you can connect with us there and do the Patreon-y stuff. Otherwise, we will catch you all next week. Bye for now.